You know, folks, it doesn't come as a surprise that when somebody stops working for a certain company or franchise, that if they get a chance to shoot, if you will, about that franchise or that company and its tactics behind the scenes, <coughs> they're going to take the opportunity to do so. You know, when... <coughs> When superstars and divas leave the WWE and go to the Indies or they go to TNA or Ring of Honor or wherever, whenever RF Video or High Spots has a chance to talk with them and allow them to speak their minds and shoot, if you will, they do just that. So, it doesn't come as a surprise that when you have somebody that used to work for maybe, let's say, a video game company like Sega, like Ryan Durham, uh, Demon, or whatever, however you spell his name, who used to be one of the primary voices of Sonic, if not probably the most popular, you know, it really says a lot when somebody that used to be the primary voice, used to be the voice of the face of your mascot, comes out and, on ex and doing a Twitter exchange, of all things. Comes out and basically answers a question from a fan. And basically, this answer is more of a shoot. And what is the shoot? How about the fact that according to what Ryan Durham said, Sega doesn't give a damn about what fans... This is what Ryan Drum said in his Twitter, and I'll even put a link to it. He said that basically Sega doesn't give a damn about what fans want, basically. All they care about is making money. That, that is basically what he said. Now, when you... <clears throat> like I said, when you hear somebody say this, in fact, this is what he said... I have the article right here from TSSZ uh, News, if you will. It's right here. And this was back in April of, of, this was on April 13th last year. This is what he said. He said, quote, in this Twitter exchange, he said, they don't give a damn about what, he, he said, basically, this is what he said in the Twitter exchange. He said, quote, they don't, they do not give a damn what fans want. They care about what makes money. Makes no sense. Or make no mistake. This is what he said. Again, this, this, this is off his Twitter. He said, They do not give a damn what fans want. They care about what makes money. Make no mistake. Now, what's funny about this is earlier this year, we hear about Sega moving the headquarters from San Francisco to Los Angeles doing this whole restructuring. And then you have... <coughs> and you have one, I guess you could say, former employee that was let go because of this restructuring, almost voicing the same sentiments that Ryan Durham had. And this is what they said. Bad business decisions, and I guess this was on Twitter as well, from a, like say, former employee, that was probably let go during the restructuring. They said, bad business decisions, well above my pay grade, money over quality was the general attitude there, and we missed out on some great opportunities. So basically what that tells people right there, folks, is apparently Sega, as respectable as it is, is, or as some people might say used to be, is more concerned about the almighty dollar than they are giving the fans what they want. It's kind of like how fans look at the WWE at times. The WWE sometimes will give you some great quality when they want to, or basically when they want to keep you quiet. But then again, most of the time they will give you crap because they care more about the money and impressing their stockholders, their shareholders, their 
outside uh, associations and organizations that they're partnered with more than giving you what you want, more than giving you the wrestling you want, the storylines you want, that, 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 that. And <coughs> as crazy as a comparison as it is with Sega, it's very similar because Sega seems to be in that same category, according to what Ryan Drum, uh, Drum and uh, this other person said on Twitter or through social media. Basically, they don't. Sega basically right now doesn't give <coughs> a care about what fans want. All they care about is what makes them money. Now, some might argue that that's not the case because if Sega only cared about money, then we wouldn't have the comics. Well, here's the thing. The comics make up a majority of that money that they get. So they're allowing the comics to pass. They're allowing the comics to have that, that free pass to do you know, whatever, you know, whatever they want. But, unfortunately, the comics have limitations. Unfortunately, the comics... <coughs> don't allow for certain characters to have certain character development. You know, a lot of people say that, you know, Sonic and Amy and, and Cream and Vanilla and Knuckles and all of them, could you, Rouge, Blaze, you name it, could all use great character development. Could really be great if they had great background stories to them as to how they came to be, what the real purpose is, da 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 And, you know, that's all fans are asking for at times. <clears throat> so when you have somebody like Ryan come out and say this, and then you have somebody kind of voice the same sentiments in a similar way, that doesn't make a company like Sega look very good in the eyes of a lot of people. Now true, a lot of people may not take what Ryan had to say seriously, or whoever this anonymous former employee is seriously. They may not take that seriously. Because they will basically come out and say, well, that's the way corporate life is. Sometimes you got to do what's best for, to make a buck. You know, no, what that is basically when a company like Sega and several other companies like Capcom and a few others, when they start caring more about money over the quality, it's basically, in my opinion, a desperate plea on their part to say, hey, look, financially we're not doing so well, so we got to focus on something that's just going to churn out enough money to keep us afloat. Because you see, a lot of companies realize that if they don't make a certain amount of money, or they don't meet that certain uh, quota for that quarter or for that year, that their one fear, <coughs> their one fear is they're going to end up going bankrupt. And by going bankrupt, it could mean a lot of things. I mean, take a look at THQ and several other uh, defunct video game companies. You know, the only way THQ and a lot of these defunct companies could pay off the now laid off employees or soon to be laid off employees and developers is to sell off some of the franchises. It's to sell off some of the titles that they've licensed and some of the franchises they've licensed. You know, when THQ went out of business <coughs> There were several titles that were up for grabs. One of them was one of my personal favorite game franchises, the WWE franchise. Gaming franchise. The SmackDown vs. Raw, and soon to be, you know, just WWE 13, 14, whatever uh, franchise. They're now known as the 2K franchise. That was up for grabs, along with several other titles. And a lot of these titles got picked up. You know, 2K picked up the WWE series, along with several other titles. EA picked up a few of their titles. You know, Squaresoft picked up some of the titles. Nintendo and even Sega themselves picked up some of THQ's titles. But the problem is, but the thing, but the point I'm trying, not the problem, but the point I'm trying to make is when a company starts doing that, not starts doing that, but when, but okay, basically, basically my point is, when a company does that, when when a company, okay, basically my point is, when 
a company in a sense starts focusing more on the money than the quality, it's because they fear that they're going to go through something like what THQ and several other defunct companies went through, and they don't want to do that. you got to realize Sega, in their minds, pretty much have already gone through enough that they don't want to have to go through even more financial burden. You know, they had to basically end the console wars, if you will, with Nintendo, just like WCW got bought, you know, ended the wars of WWE when they got bought out by WWE. Sega basically had to, well, they didn't necessarily get bought out. More along the lines, just had to say, for money-saving costs, had to say, you know what? We're not doing consoles anymore, we're just going to do games. And basically, by doing just games, they basically sold out to the competition of Nintendo and eventually PlayStation, uh, Sony, if you will, and then Microsoft. They basically sold out to those companies by, dis by developing and distributing games for them. So, don't, don't think for a second that the people at Sega of Japan and maybe some at Sega of America don't realize, you know what? We've already gone through enough shit in the past 15-something years. We don't need to go through any more shit. You know, we need to survive. We need to thrive. <clears throat> I mean, don't think for a second that when you have all these third-party developers coming up with these plug-and-play uh, game systems that are based off classic consoles like the Atari consoles, the Colecos, the Intellivisions, and even the Genesis. Don't think for one second that those companies that they're based off of don't get a piece of the pie. They do. You know, when you have a company, a third-party developer, creating and releasing and licensing to create a plug-and-play version of the Genesis, which on top of that also allows you to play Genesis cartridges as well. You don't think Sega's not going to go for that? Of course they are. It gives them a piece of that money. It gives them a piece of the incentive. Probably more of an incentive than the developer that's creating this plug-and-play version of the Genesis could have thought of. Or could have, you know, hope, could have not hoped for, but uh, ended up doing. The, the point is, the, the point is, it's more along the lines that a company right now like Sega, and you can throw Capcom in there and several others, even though, believe it or not, some people may find this hard to believe, that the comics might be the best thing going right now, and that the Boom cartoon series might be the best thing going right now uh, for Sega. And the Mega Man comics might be the best thing going right now for Capcom. As well as the Street Fighter series still kind of has a strong following. Don't think... Don't... How do I put this? Don't think for a second that that excuse, in the fans' eyes, that excuses bad quality. Because it doesn't. See, a lot of fans, they ridicule Sega for what they did with Sonic Boom by not only licensing some of the develop <coughs> developing and all that to this red button and these people and all that. But basically... Because of the bad quality, because it wasn't a, a, you know, it was a Sonic game, but it wasn't a Sonic game in a sense that said, hey, this is Sonic, as, you know, in a different way, in a way you're going to like. Because even though it was hyped up to be the next big thing for the Sonic franchise, it ended up being, it ended up being very underwhelming in the eyes of a lot of fans. Now, did, did fans still buy the game? Of course they did, because it had Sonic's name on it. And that's all that Sega cares about at times, according to what Ryan Durham said, and this other employee, and everybody else has said. 
basically they all they care about is the mighty, mighty dollar. You know, you had Angry Joe <coughs> come out and complain about what Nintendo's doing, and Nintendo with this whole creative thing, whatever, to where they take a major percentage of what of con of they take a major percentage of uh, of the money you make of the monetizing you make off the video where you only get a small percentage you know a lot of people don't like that because it's like look there's there's nothing really wrong it's like we're giving you free advertisements you know all these other companies you know they they see that they see we're giving them free advertising and yet they don't, they're not charging, they're not doing this, they're not doing that, and yet you are. And people don't like that practice. And a lot of people, like Rich from Review Tech USA, and Angry Joe, and several other people have said, Nintendo, if you keep this up, you're going to cause yourselves to have a huge downfall, and it's going to be on you. Now, with that said... Sega sort of falls into that same category because if they care more about quality, I mean, they care about more, they care more about making money than over quality, then that's not going to help them in the long run. I mean, Boom, like I said, was supposed to be the next breakout Sonic title because it was introducing another layer and adding another layer to the Sonic franchise and another option to the Sonic franchise. But instead, what happened? <coughs> Instead, what happened? The game, even though it probably sold well, became very underwhelming, got criticized for being bad quality. And that's, that's not how you do business. Again, I understand Sega, along with other companies like Capcom and several others, are going through some financial struggles right now. You know... <coughs> You know, you had Silent Hill taken out by, by their developer, their distributor. And, you know, it's just one of those things that when you hear someone that used to work closely with Sega, even though he was, because he was the voice of their main mascot, when you hear this person saying, hey, all they care about is making money, and then you hear a former employee, sim, you know, voice the same sentiments, again, that doesn't look good for anybody on that side of the fence when it comes to Sega. Because of what it sounds like, with everything that we've been hearing going on with the company, that they are in financial struggles, they are in financial turmoil, but they're not going to come out and really say that until eventually there's going to be some kind of evidence that will slip out and say, hey, we are in fin that says that says, hey, Sega, the reason for everything that's been going on with them is because they're in financial turmoil. But they're not letting you know that. I mean, one of the biggest news is, is, and, and surprises, if you will, that came out this week was the fact that Sega's not going to have a booth at E3. And even, if it develop, and even if you're a company that develops games and distributes games for other companies' consoles, usually you have, you know, usually you, <coughs> you know, usually you have some kind of booth where you display the games, where you let people play the games on the different console variations that you're going to have it on. And when you don't have a con, and when you come out and say that it's the biggest video game entertainment event uh, of the summer, along with San Diego Comic Con, that you're not going to have a booth, that's pretty telling. It really is. And this is coming from a company whose mascot is going to get his first theatrical film in the next few years, possibly, with them probably getting some kind of bit of the percentage, some kind of a, with, with Sega probably getting some kind of payoff from it. <coughs> but still, but still it's, it's one of those things that it makes you wonder what is really going on with Sega. Are they hiding things from us and not letting us really know the truth? And honestly, when you read when you read a tweet like that from Ryan Durham, even though.